Good. So let's learn what uh, we need for doing these client-server applications, the client in JavaScript and HTML, and the server in Python and REST. Uh, the piece of technology that we need, need uh, still to learn is called AJAX. Hmm? Stand for asynchronous JavaScript and XML. Uh, just to understand what uh, we are trying to do, imagine something that you you are seeing a thousand times, uh, or maybe more, in every website, uh, which is the autocomplete function. The autocompletion was the first real, uh, say, large-scale application of the Ajax technology. Uh, what happens when you're writing something in a search box? As you write, the browser looks up for reasonable, uh, say, completions of the string that you started to type. You started to type AJ, and so the, the browser will try to complete what you've written. Right? Uh, having a new box of text appear with words to be clicked uh, is easy, relatively. It's just a basic matter of CSS and uh, some jQuery for making the box appear or disappear. The tricky part is the content of that box. Uh, does the JavaScript in the web page know about uh, all the possible completions to all the possible words that you are going to write? No, it can't. So as soon as you type an A in that box, the JavaScript in the page says, okay, I want to understand which are the most likely completions for a string starting with A. But I'm just a tiny piece of JavaScript trapped inside an HTML page. I can't, I can't do anything which is not what, or can't have any access to any information that was not already in the HTML page. So what I need is a way for this tiny piece of JavaScript trapped into an HTML page to reach out and call a server for help and say, please call into a server, please tell me what are the most likely completions of the string that starts with A. So it's not a function that the JavaScript in the page can do on itself. It, it doesn't have the information. It cannot have all the possible words or, or, or texts or, or phrases and then do the computation locally inside your browser. It just doesn't have that information. This information about all the search strings that are done in the, in the world is something that the server, in this case Google, has in its own storage. So we need a way for JavaScript, when they type A, to call the server asking for the four most likely completions, for example, and the server should reply back with some strings that the JavaScript will then put into a nice rectangle with colors and so on. These are all JavaScript uh, client-side stuff. The issue is just ex exchanging some data with the server without interrupting the user, without reloading the page, without closing anything, without changing anything, just in the in background. As you type, it does this lookup on the server. When the server replies, it just tells you the completions. Hmm? So right now, what we did in the previous example, you see we have all the chain with the, the application, so the, uh, the Python code that they're access to a, data, uh, uh, to a database for getting the to-do, uh, say, text, uh, the items. We have the web server, we have the internet, we have the browser, and we worked in the last hour in JavaScript on this client-side application. We put some logic into the HTML page. But that logic could only uh, communicate with the page through the DOM and through the DOM events, nothing more. What we are doing now is to add new capabilities for this JavaScript code to call new methods on the web server. 
So to make new HTTP calls, basically. Making new HTTP calls without reloading the page in background. Hmm? That is why this is called the asynchronous method. Something which is not synchronous or synchronized with the loading of the page. One HTTP call every time I load a new page. But asynchronously, in background, while the page is doing its stuff, the JavaScript code will do new HTTP calls to the server, in background, asynchronously. And the server will reply with the data. Not with a new image, not with a new HTML page, not with a CSS file, but with data, raw data. JSON. And the JavaScript will receive this JSON and will use it to update the content of the page. So I could update the content of the page based on some information that I just got from the server. Okay? This is the, the new, let's say, item that we are adding. And it changes what happens between the browser and the server. Uh, Usually, huh, in the synchronous way, um, maybe, I don't remember, maybe we didn't see these diagrams before, it's what happens at, across the different levels. So the user clicks on a link on a browser, the browser sends a packet to the web server, the HTTP request, the web server activates the, the application server, so the Python code, and the Python code can make one or more queries to the database until the application server is able to return the HTML code through the templates, in our case, to the browser. And it's done, usually. So there's only one exchange over HTTP, request and response. With Ajax, with the asynchronous technology, after the page is being downloaded, then the runtime, the JavaScript, on its own, can do additional requests to the server when it wants, even more than one, even overlapping ones. And the effect of these new requests, of course, will be to activate the application server to do something, to query some data from the database, probably. All the rest methods, get, put, post, that you already know, delete, do something on the back end, on the database and then return some information back. This information will be, able, will be used to update the user interface. Many, many times behind the scenes in the background, on the same page, so there are no explicit user action. Then of course, when the user wants to change the page, everything starts, starts over from the beginning. But while the user is on the same page, a storm of new HTTP requests will happen. When you're doing autocomplete, every time you write a letter, you are creating a new request to the server. And if you don't believe it, just try it. If you're writing something, A, where's the, sorry, B, C, D, and you see these uh, new calls that are called XHR, XHR is, is our friends that we're going to, eat, to meet in a second, uh, that are re a new request every time I write a letter. And uh, if you have uh, sharp eyes, you could recognize at a given point there in the query string, Q equal to AB in the second line. And uh, after, it will be Q equal A, B, C, D. So every time I write a letter here, the browser will do an additional call with a new HTTP request that's going to detail with the request, and that request will require some information from the server which is returned in JSON. Response header will be a JSON file. And the response, in this case, is something that 
is a list of possible completions. It's encoded in some way to, to, to have more information, but uh, it's a normal JSON response. So whenever I click or I write a letter, a new HTTP exchange from between me and the server happens. So this is what uh, we want to be able to do even here. Now, we don't want to do the auto-completion here because it's not needed probably, but uh, at least when you want to enter a new task, I only want to insert it and uh, show it on the, ta on, the, on the HTML table without uh, changing everything. So, uh, this can be done with this uh, AJAX technology, and this AJAX technology, okay, it's, it's a name that, that we give to a set of, uh, of, of uh, standards uh, and a set of, um, let's say, programming patterns, AJAX. Uh, there's no technology called AJAX by itself, but it's a combination of HTML, DOM, CSS, JavaScript, and whatever. Hmm? All the technology that we, did, that we know, plus one specific JavaScript object class, which is called XML HTTP request, XHR. That's the XHR that we saw in the Google. In the, so uh, the HTTP calls are not managed by the browser itself, but are managed by this uh, HXR um, object, XML HTTP request object. Uh, let me skip this. Uh, so this is a JavaScript object with, which, uh, that is able to handle the asynchronous call. We already know a bit about, about asynchronous programming. I set something now and I, wait, and I wait for an event to happen later to complete the action. XML HTTP request is an object that is able to do HTTP requests. So uh, let me show you some JavaScript code, uh, how it works, uh, for understanding how it works. Then we will use much simpler calls in, J in the jQuery library, okay? But first we need to understand the basics, uh, to understand basically the, the, the timing of, of what's happening. So inside your JavaScript code, you want to do an auto-completion request, for example. So you have an on key up event, on your text input, and every time the user types a new key, your function is called. And your function needs to get a list, a list of strings, the possible completions, right? At that point, I need to do an HTTP call. Uh, you can imagine that I don't want to make an HTTP call in a synchronous way. Synchronously would mean like in an alert block, an alert, an alert window. It will block the, the execution of the browser, block the execution of the JavaScript. I don't want my page to be freezed, to be frozen uh, until the HTTP request is completed. I want to send the HTTP request and let the page still be responsive. And then when, maybe half a second later, the response will come from the server, I update the page. So there are two different moments in an asynchronous call. The moment in which I'm making the call, I'm sending the HTTP request, and then I forget about it. The JavaScript will do something else on the page. We continue to interact with the user. We'll not block the page. And then later, when the response arrives, I will have an event handler that will take care of the response. Receive it analyze it, and update the page. So the first step is sending the request. Sending the request is easy. It's as easy as creating a new instance of the HTTP request object, XML HTTP request object, XHR, and calling the open method on this object. This will open a new connection with method get or post of what you want. This is the HTTP method, the first parameter and the URL that you want to call. The third parameter is true or false, means synchronous or asynchronous. By default, it's always asynchronous. 
You can put it synchronous so that it waits for the response only when you're debugging uh, to, to avoid cluttering with parallel requests. And after you call open, you may call the send method, which actually sends the request. So open prepares the request, and send will send it. Usually, you, you, you will do that at the same time. Once you call send, the HTTP request is out. And you usually you can't do anything else until the response arrives. So usually you, you finish your, your job. Your job here is finished. You don't, you don't have anything to do right now after calling send. Usually send is the last instruction in your, in your method, in your code. And uh, what, but the, so you don't have anything to do, but the XHR object is still alive. It's alive and it's alive for managing the HTTP request. And every time something happens to the request, for example, the response survives, the object is notified. The XHR object is notified. And if I want to, to be notified also with my code, I can register, guess what, an event handler on the XHR object. So, uh, for example, the, let me show it here in, with, with this picture, which is easier to understand. The XHR object manages the state of the HTTP request. And the state goes from new, just created, to done without errors. And uh, it has different steps. I created the object, I call the open method on the XHR object, and then I can send, call the send method, on the object, at this point, the headers are sent, so the object which is, goes to an open state, uh, and the request is sent. At some point, the, the response will start to arrive. First of all, I will get the headers. So when all the headers have been received, the XHR object to register that and by moving into an headers received state. And when I finish receiving the headers, I can, the, the, my code could already analyze them, but the body is still, is still arriving. So after receiving the headers, the object goes into a loading state where the body is loading. Is loading. And uh, I know that the body is loading, I know that it could take time, so I can wait until the loading of the body is finished and the object moves to the done state. Or maybe there's some error at some, at some point, some time out error, time out error or something else, and the object goes into this state. So this is the life cycle of every HTTP request, in particular those managed by the XHR object. And what are these states? Uh, are just the values of a property called ready state into the XHR object. So ready state starts from zero, which means this, unsent. Then we'll transition to one, opened. Then we'll transition to two, either received. Then to three, receiving. Then to four, complete or done. So every, and every time the ready state variable is changed and will change according to the data received from the server, you may be informed. You can uh, register an event tender on the changes of the variable ready, uh, ready state. And this is called the ready state change event. So basically what happens is that you create an object, a new XML HTTP request, and you register on this object on ready state change an event handler as a function. And what this function does? Usually, well, this function, remember, is called every time the state changes. So you move from one state to the other. Normally, we are interested in state four, done. 
because only then you have the body of the response. You have the list of the completions of for your string. So usually the, the, the event tender is called every time the state changes, but you only want to do something when the state is for, done, or complete. And so if the ready state is for, do something. Otherwise, just ignore the call, just return. And if the state is for, maybe you can check if, if the HTTP status is in, is in the 200 range, so it means success. At that point, you have a, a property called response text in the XHR object, which gives you the body of the response. So it's a bit complex because you need to set up the call, and before sending the call, you need to register an event tender on the already state change. Already state change gets called many times. You are only interested when it, went, when it gets called with four. With the state, with the ready state equal to four. In that case, when ready state is four, then the response text property will be valid. You can reuse it for whatever you want. In this case, for uh, uh, filling in a span element or whatever. Okay, so this is the real work you are doing here. You are getting the response and you are modifying the document, ah, so the, the page, according to what you, what you got from the server. So uh, all the asynchronous behavior always follows this pattern. By the way, it's a bit strange, but you get used to it, it, it that open and send are after this code. Just remember, I'm creating an object, I'm registering an event tender to this object, and later I send a request. Then I forget about that object, but that object has already my function attached to it. And whenever on that object this, the state changes, my code here, my anonymous function is called. So the code is not executed in this order, but executed one, two, and then three, four, and much, much later, the body of the function, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, so the, the execution order is not the, the text order of this code. Uh, which, which is normal, we already got used to that in the, in the hour before. I'm registering an event tender, I'm providing right now the body of the event tender, but I know that this code will be called much later. Up to now, we were used uh, to the fact that later would depend on the user actions, when the user clicks. In this case, later is related to the server actions, when the server responds. Mm -hmm. But the idea is the same. And uh, how to do that in, uh, in jQuery? Uh, where's my browser? Here. Well, it's uh, easy because in jQuery, you see, oh, this is in alphabetical order, but there's a whole section about uh, AJAX calls in jQuery. And uh, uh, there are a lot of methods. Most of them are just uh, variants of this main object called the jQuery.ajax. This is the jQuery version of the XML HTTP request, which is much simpler to use. How to call this object? Uh, jQuery.ajax, or $.ajax, of course, and you have two parameters. One is the URL, so the address that you want to call, and the second is a, a settings parameter. And a settings is an object, a dictionary, with a lot of properties. Uh, and all these properties are described here uh, in alphabetical order, so not all of them are important. I'll accept, uh, async, uh, before send, cache, complete, contents, content type, content, and so on. It goes on for pages. 
So all the different uh, uh, parameters that you can set uh, in this uh, request. And this dollar uh, jQuery.ajax will call the server. You can have, for example, set the method, method, jm method. You can set whether you want a, a get or a post or a put, and will be useful for our uh, JSON um, REST calls, because sometimes I want to make a get, sometimes I want to make a, a post or a put or a delete. I can set the content type of what I'm setting, whether it's content type with the C, content type. So my post will send you a JSON. So I need to send the content type to application.json because the default is a form URL encoded, which is not uh, how we prepare the content, the encoding of our content. And so these are all the informa some information that we need for making the call. Then the, the, the interesting part is uh, what happens when the results come. In the edge of call, I can, I have two properties that I use when the response uh, arrives. One is called the success. So it's down there. Uh, where is the S of success? Okay, success is a parameter of type function. Success is the event handler for when, that will be called when the request is completed with success without any error. So it already does all, it's all internal polling and only when the request is complete and completed without error, this function will be called. So this function is called when the edges request is complete. And this function, so it will be my event handler, is called with the data parameter. And this data is the request body. So in the edges call, I do the call and I register an event handler that will be called when the, when the response arrives, and this event handler will receive a copy of the response body, and of course also the text and so on, but the response body. And in our case, it, this will be the JSON that the REST server replied to us. Then with this, J, with this JSON, we can do whatever we want. Okay? Um, this data will be interpreted in, a, in different ways uh, according to its type. So I said this is anything, As anything uh, is a bit uh, general. It could be a string or it could be an object. Uh, if you want it to be an object, you should declare, and you have another parameter which is called data type, the format in which you expect the data to be retrieved. So if you set the data type to JSON, uh, your data type is here. You can set the data type to JSON, and then jQuery will automatically understand the response from JSON and convert that into JavaScript objects. You don't need to do it yourself. So there's a lot of intelligence inside these JavaScript objects in, uh, in jQuery, this AJAX object in jQuery. You just need to understand the most important properties here to set when you're doing your call. We will need to do that uh, because we need, uh, say, to, to set all these parameters. By the way, this is the most complete function. No? The documentation says that this is a low-level interface to AJAX, which is already more high-level than the basic JavaScript object. But there are uh, easier functions, like, for example, not these ones. 
these ones. For example, get. Get is the most called function, usually, which is a shorthand for AJAX. Actually, get loads data using a get request. It's already URL, and you can already provide a success function. So it's a simpler way of doing the same thing. Huh. You, do, you, you, you don't have to provide a complete object with many settings, but only basically the success function. Hmm? And uh, it's a documentation says that uh, calling get is the same as calling Ajax with these parameters. So it's, uh, it's just a short end. It's, it's, it's easier to, to understand. Uh, one function which is even easier to, to do is the load function that we, ne we ne most, mostly never use that already predefines a success function. And the success, what this, this predefined function will do is to get the response body and put it inside an HTML element. So you can attach this load to a div and say dollar div something dot load URL. And they will set an asynchronous call, and when the call is received, that, those, that div gets filled with the response. So it's a way of loading a part of the page dynamically from a server that will provide you with a fragment of HTML. And this fragment of HTML will just go in directly inside the element. We usually don't uh, call a server for getting fragments of HTML. We prefer to deal with raw data, with JSON data. Mm -hmm. That's why load is not very useful, because it's not useful to populate some element with JSON uh, strings. Uh, we, 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 need, we need to interpret those strings to do something in, uh, in our page. So these are the basic mechanisms. What can we do in our application? So let me uh, show this project. I, I took the Python REST project that you're seeing with uh, Luigi a couple of weeks ago. That uh, where the server page, the Python code, uh, had all the, you see them, the REST methods. Get tasks, get individual task, post to tasks, to add a new task, okay? Remember that. Uh, at that point, we were focused on the implementation of these methods. And uh, in addition to the, uh, the, the REST methods, we had a, a simple home page that we didn't care too much about at that time. Now, we, today, we'll try to understand how to create this page. So remember, we don't want this page to be populated with the list of elements. We want this page to start empty, and then on its own, with JavaScript code, it will get the information that it needs from the server. So what I did is to also to copy the index.html that we did one hour ago into this new project. Of course, it's not working because this uh, HTML relied on filling the table with the elements uh, present in a task list. We don't have any task list here. Okay, we need to do it from zero. So all of this Sorry, can be deleted because we don't have this. The body of the table is unknown for the moment. So what do you want to do? Because actually, no, um, if you follow me, we in this web application, we have two separate parts. One is the server that publishes a set of REST methods, and one is the interface that publishes a single page 
with intelligent code in it, with JavaScript code. Uh, these are called uh, so-called single page applications. There's just an index, and the index is basically an empty page, or a, bit, a little more than an empty page, with some JavaScript with, that will download all the parts that it needs and change the contents dynamically. Okay, so we prepare the page, the index, with an empty table here, and the insert button as we know it. In this case, if we run this project, so the running, No, it's not already running. So let's be sure that we close all the others. Okay, run it. Okay. Right now, the template is just an empty page with the form at the bottom. The first uh, thing we want to do is that uh, this page should be able to load the table content from the server asynchronously. Okay, how to do that? Oh, we, we do that in JavaScript. So in the JavaScript file, I already prepared an empty skeleton for jQuery. I want to actually do something. When the user clicks on the submit button, and at the beginning, so initially, load the table content asynchronously. asynchronously. After the page is loaded, then I get the content, the list of tasks, and put them into the table. And then whenever the user submits the event, first check if, it, if it's valid, then insert the new element in the, in the database and then update the table. So loading the table content means calling a get on API version 1.0 tasks. Is that the method name? Yes. And inserted a new element in the DB means making a post to API version 1.0 tasks. And then after you do the post, you have updated the database, but you also want or need to update the user interface. And so updating the table means, uh, again, getting this list of tasks, updated list of tasks. If we want later to delete something, we will need to do something like that. Check if the delete action is valid, call a delete method on the back end, which is not implemented yet, but we can do that in REST and then refresh the table. So the, the easy part first, loading the table content. So since the loading of the table is needed twice, here and there, I prefer to define a function update task table, right, outside. So I can, at this point, just call this function and be done. Always ask yourself, when is this function going to be called? As soon as the document is ready. So when I load the page, the page, sorry, oops, what did I do? The page is empty, but as soon as the page is loaded, I will call this uh, uh, update task table, JavaScript function, 
And this JavaScript function will try to fill the table with actual values, right? Okay. Um, and then at the very beginning, I will also register an event handler for this button. That will do some action on its own hmm? later. But immediately we do this. So we don't wait, wait for an event for the user clicking on something for loading. So immediately after the page is, uh, is ready, we try to load the contents of the table. And we do that in this function. So what do we need to do? Well, we need to call this method in the task server. API tasks with method get. And we know that this method will uh, uh, return a list of tasks. Okay? So, uh, where are we? First of all, get the JSON with the list of tasks for, from the server. This needs to be asynchronous. I cannot block the page loading until I get this list. So I'm prepared to do an asynchronous call, an Ajax call. Ajax with the, these two main parameters. The first is the, the address. We know that. And the second parameter is uh, the list of properties. So I put in, in braces a dictionary with the properties that, ne that I need to set. What are the properties of this request? Well, first of all, uh, the method. Method is get. I want to do a get on this URL. Okay. Do I need to send any data? No. I need to understand and interpret the data that they received in JSON format. So we saw that uh, there's a parameter called data data type, if I'm not wrong. So it's better to check. Okay. We go to Ajax. Yes, data type. Data type, so uh, not here. Yeah. That, the data type property would be JSON. And then um, we just need to, to define what happens on success. And we define a function to be executed on success. So I'm sending an HTTP request with some parameters, and I'm, oh, sorry, data. Uh, the, the success function has some parameters. Uh, it's better to list them so that we can use them later. Success, where are you? Yeah. Data, text status, and a reference to the object, but we don't need it. But we, the data and the status may be useful. Okay. So 
uh, ideally, when this function is called, so ideally if we didn't do any mistake, when this uh, function is called, the data parameter will contain a JSON object that was returned by the server. Let's check it. Just write an alert for, for debug purposes. Let's see what happens, what is returned by the server, right? So we are trying to see whether it's working or not. Uh, in this portion here, if, if we see that the data are correct, our job will be to parse the object, the JSON object, extract the elements and uh, complete the table in HTML by working with the jQuery methods. But first of all, let's check, let's check whether we have any errors up to now. This one. Okay, it's, it's, a, it's an object, which is already something. But what does this object contain? We can see it in the debugger. Okay. Uh, for example, here, we can put a breakpoint here. Reload the page and see that this data is an object. This object is an array. It's not the JSON text. We declared that the response was in JSON, so jQuery already converted the JSON string into a JavaScript object. In particular, this object is an array called tasks. And this array contains from zero to nine, 10 objects, and each, each object has three property, description, ID, urgent. So this is the object representation of our JSON. We created that in Python. <coughs> now we have it in JavaScript. And it traveled as a string in, in JSON. But it's always the same data. So from that object, we can extract the property tasks, and the property task is an array. From, from each element of this array, we can extract this description ID and urgent. So if we want to be more, to provide more information here, we can say not just data, but data <coughs> dot tasks, which is the name of the top level property of this object. This is an array. Dot zero, first element, dot description, for example. And this should print the description of the first task in the list. You see what I did? I tried to navigate the object, the data. It has a property called tasks, tasks, this one. Task is an array, so I need to select one item, the array selection in square brackets. I select the first item, zero, here, sorry. And from the first element, I select the description, which is the name of a property of each element of this array. And so I should see call Giovanni. Check whether, let's check it. Reload. Call Giovanni for a MI project organization. So it's the name of the first task. So right now, of course, we, we, we won't spend our lives with alerts. Uh, we, we need to extract information from this data structure. 
So the tasks is, uh, can be retrieved from data.tasks, which is an array of tasks. Uh, var, a variable. And for every task, I can extract, I can loop over the, the individual tasks and I can extract all the values. And for example, I can have uh, uh, the description var. Sorry, I need to loop for e is zero until e is less than tasks dot length increase i for every element I can extract the description as uh, tasks number i dot description and the urgency from tasks element i uh, dot urgent dot urgent now we have the, uh, the values for one single item. And I need to take these elements and add a new row to the table. Okay? So how can I match the table with jQuery? Let's see what the table class ID, task list. Right. We already have an ID, so we can hang to the table with, J with jQuery uh, and say, okay, dollar table with ID task list. This is our table. We want, to, we want to add one row, one new row to a table with these two elements. How can we do that? Well, let's check the documentation of jQuery. Um, it's not easy. DOM insertion. So manipulation is the section when you have all the methods for changing the page. DOM insertion means adding new elements around inside outside. So if you imagine you have a div, in this case we have a table. You can add something outside of div, so before and after. So you're wrapping the div into something else, or you can change something inside, inside the div. And this is what we want to do. We want to change something inside the table. And inside, we have an append method, for example. Insert content specified by the parameter to the end of each element in a set of matched elements. So we can have a table dot append. We can append a content, and this content may be just a string, so we create the HTML for a table row, or it could be something more complex, a set of already element objects, if we already have the DOM nodes and we are trying to move the dots from one place to another. Uh, the easiest part is, uh, is just to create, append, a new string, which contains the syntax for the row. Row, 
data, another data cell, and then the row is over. And these, in these two data cells, we have uh, to append, uh, to insert the description, and the uh, urgent. So let's try to break it in some place. So I'm creating a string that looks like the piece of HTML that I want to add. And I will add it inside the table in the last position, append. And then I cross my fingers and see what happens. Wow. Let's try to see it without the debugger. So you remember, I didn't cheat that the, this page was empty, right? I reload it, and the lines are just converted from JSON to HTML. It's not very nice because we see the table be, uh, while being created. No? If, you're, if you're looking, you see that it doesn't appear at once. Huh? Mm, it, there are workarounds around that, like uh, hiding the table and then constructing it and then showing, showing it again in just in one piece, but these are all details. Huh? In, interaction, user interaction details. What it counts is that we have a way huh, of adding new parts of the page. Just with a get. Hmm? Okay, I forgot the third column in which I had um, the submit button. So the, the, the delete button for the moment. Hmm? Okay, so I have one less cell. I could add an, an empty cell until, be, because also in this implementation we don't have um, a delete function implemented in the rest yet. But I could add the button here I can steal it from the HTML of the other project. Index.html, where's the code for the button? Here, this one. And then I will get mad at, at all the, uh, okay, the href uh, has, doesn't mean anything here because we don't have any link to go. And then span. Let me do something else. I don't want to become crazy. <coughs> Remove this href because I, I need to handle it asynchronously. We finish the string. Semicolon. Okay, so I put this into a string to make it more readable. The last TD. Okay. This is just string nightmare. I mean, nothing complex. Just boring. Okay? To have a, a copy of these buttons there. And by the way, if I'm creating these buttons, these links that go nowhere at the moment, because they shouldn't go anywhere, 
At this point, I should register an event tender for the click event on these buttons, on these links, so that I will be able to handle them. So at this point, I just created new buttons, and when I, I finish to create this table, these are new elements on the page. At this point, I could, uh, so uh, I'm already inside the, the, the success function, outside the four, so the table is complete. Now, I could pick all of these buttons, a dot, uh, a dot, uh, <laughs> I dot delete class and add a click event handler to them. That right now does nothing, but I can improve it later. So I'm creating some HTML and immediately I'm registering some event handler on the newly born elements. And you see that this a.delete matches many buttons, and to each of them, a function for ending the click event is associated. So in one instruction, I already registered many, 10 in this case, event handlers. All that match to the same, all that go to the same function. And we are <coughs> deeply nested here, because inside this event handler, I am in the asynchronous event lender for the click event of an element that has been added in the function asynchronous call of, a de of an edge call, which is inside the function called inside document ready. So try not to get lost. Did you see the Inception movie? jQuery is the same. A dream inside a dream inside a dream inside a dream. Okay? This is just for loading the page. It can be more or less uh, intelligent in this case. Uh, the, the bad part here is, of course, the composition of the HTML. You can do it more cleverly. For example, you could have a hidden table row already ready to copy clone, and then you can add information there so the JavaScript here doesn't need to bother about the TD and TR and so on, but minor points. The important part is that a page that was empty is now able to get the information it we need and then update itself automatically. Uh, after that, we can think about insertion of a new element. Okay, we already know how to do part of this. Checking whether it's valid is something that we already did in the previous hour. So we just get the value of the description. I'm copying from the previous project, right? I'm getting the value text. And then I'm checking whether the length is less than three. And if the test is less than three, I do nasty things to the user, prevent default, and so on. Okay, these are when it's not valid. But what happens when it's valid? Else, else I need to insert a new element in the DB and do everything else. So I put a... Right now, in the previous project, uh, the, the page had nothing to do when the form was valid, because the submit button just called the Python code that did all the work in a different page. Right now, if everything is right, we, need to handle the event ourselves. 
By the way, the prevent default should be done always, not only in the, in the bad case, because we are dealing with that. I don't want the, the, the form to be submitted ever. So inserting a new element into the database means actually retrieving the information that I need. The text is already there. I can also retrieve uh, the urgency from the checkbox. So I need to retrieve the urgency from the checkbox with name equal, what's the name of the checkbox? Urgent. and get, the checkboxes are, are strange to read, you need uh, to call a property method, prop, check, which is a boolean that tells you whether the checkbox is checked or not. <coughs> so we are now doing the reverse, we are extracting information from the HTML page and sending it to the server. So these are the two parameters. We need to create a post call with an object as the uh, server expects it. So the JSON object is a, a dictionary with a description taken from the text and a um, urgent, taking from the urgent variable. This is the object we want to send to, do, to post to the server, right? Uh, and so we can send an edit call. Again, we have two parameters, the address, with just API version 1.0 tasks again. At this time, the properties will be different. I have the method that should be post in this case. And then, <laughs> What's wrong here? Third dot Ajax, URL, then. Ah, sorry. It's not equal, but it's column. Okay, then I need, in this case, to send some data. So sending data, let's go to jQuery, Ajax. Sending data needs the data property that contains the actual request body that we want to send, and the content type in which we declare how this data is encoded. In our case, we want to encode it in JSON because it's what the server expects. So the content type, uh, we, I need to put it in quotes because, no, so what, what, ah, no, it's written like this. Okay, so I don't need any quotes. Content type would be application slash JSON and the data should be the JSON object. Actually, 
there's a strange thing about uh, the jQuery object that by default, if data is a plain object, uh, it will be sent uh, with this uh, form encoding. So we want uh, to send it always as a string. Hmm? It's very easy because in JavaScript we can call the JSON dot stringify method that takes a, a, an object, JSON in our case is an object, and converts it into a JSON string. Serializes into JSON. So this should be enough for posting the content to the server. The post doesn't return anything to us, right? There's no return value. Actually, what we want to know is when the post completes, because when the post completes, we can update the table. So again, we define a success function There's no data, there's no interesting status, there's no data basically, but the function already supports it. And when this function is called, when the post is complete. So I could reload the page, the table. I can call the, how do I call it? Update task table function. So when the first, the post, HTTP request, asynchronous, just finished, I schedule immediately another one to get the list of the tasks. Hmm? Let's see what is working. There's still one bug, but uh, not, it's not for today. So let's try it. Load the page. Okay. If I try to insert something wrong, it doesn't. If I try to see into something like it works, it does something. The bug is that the table is not emptied, so I'm always appending a new full list. So I would need to delete the first lines before appending the others, but it's just a detail. It works, was, up, was inserted into the database. So when I clicked into enter, the JavaScript will send a post message to the server saying, add this. When the post replied, okay, I finished, I did another get to get the full list, and I populated the HTML table with the full list. The only thing I still need to do, and this should be done in the, uh, in the update task table, is before appending all the items, clear up uh, the previous entries. Okay, it's, it's easy, uh, but we, we run out of time. It's just removing the element except for the first line that contains the headers. You don't want to remove this line. You, know, you want to remove all the other ones, so it's just looping over the lines of the table. It's just a normal JavaScript exercise, okay? So this is how we work in asynchronous JavaScript programming in Ajax. The HTML is minimal. Basically, it defines containers and placeholders. When we do an action, the action doesn't cause a new page to be reloaded, but that action is intercepted or is dealt directly by an event handler in the page, in the JavaScript of the page. This event tender can do one or more asynchronous calls to do the modification that it needs or to get the information that it needs and then update the page accordingly. So this asynchronous function on, on one hand talk to the server for sending posts, getting gets, and on the other hand talks to the DOM for knowing uh, the user action, the user request, and from updating the page asynchronously in real time. The user is never blocked, never. Uh, because everything that happens, happens in the background. Okay? 
is a bit complex, but you can do uh, actually highly responsive, highly complex replication in this way. Right now we did it with a very simple function. You can understand that the, the level of nesting of handler inside handler inside handler can become very complex. So let's try to no, just always remember to, to build a, a plan on paper of what you are going to do, define helper functions in which you can delegate the boring stuff, all the string manipulation and so on. So make small functions that help you and then put the core of your methods without uh, too many, say, stupid functions in there. But right now we, ju we just did everything together. Uh, it's better to do it uh, in a more polished way, but the idea is always the same. Hmm? $.ajax, if it's simpler, you can just use $.get. For example, in the first case, a get would be enough, but there's not much difference. The difference between get and ajax is that uh, in, uh, in, the, in the first case, this uh, function, instead of being in the success settings would be just a second parameter of the call. So really, we are just saving a couple of braces, not, not, not a big issue. Okay? So it was long but complex, so you need to sleep on, on, on it. And uh, don't sleep too much because tonight you have to complete your website for deliverable number two. Tomorrow we will try to start to check the website, and on Monday we'll, uh, we can discuss about uh, your project on D2. Hmm? Okay. Good evening.